Hi and welcome to NoBB, where we build apps without using any black box components and study all the parts that make them work. Today we're building a game inspired by the popular superhero film Doctor Strange. The game will use a camera and you play it using a pointer like this green marker I have here. All you need to do is draw a circle and if you do a good job you pass the game and get a score. We'll build the game in six parts and I'm gonna keep them here throughout the video. As usual we'll start off by writing the source code for the interface. This is gonna be the structure of our page. The game has a title and we'll use a square canvas to display the camera and another one for the effects. I'm going to show you later how you can put them on top of each other. Next we need to start the camera, but I already showed you how to do that last time, so take it away, Green Radu. We try to start the camera here. This is when the browser asks if we allow it or not. Once we do, we get the data stream from the camera, we link it to a video element and start playing. This won't show images anywhere though. For that, we use this function here that draws them to the canvas every 42 milliseconds. If we denied access earlier or we don't have a camera, then this message pops up. Now, this code works, but my camera has a wide aspect ratio and different browsers tend to handle it in different ways. Now, I do look thinner on the left, but I generally am not a big fan of squished images. So to have this work similarly on different browsers, I will crop it myself to the size of the canvas. That should do it. Thanks, Green Radu. Now, I assume you know what images are, that they're made of pixels and what pixels are and so on. But if you don't, check out Green Radu's explanation in the description below. The next step is to find out where this green pointer is. Now, I say this is green, but there are so many greens out there. This is pure green. It emits no red or blue light and a maximum amount of green light. But it's quite different from my pointer here. This one is closer, I think. You can see that the green amount is less here, but the other values are not zero either. So let's use this value now and find out where all the green is in this picture. Image data comes in fact as a long array of numbers. The numbers come in groups of four and each group represents a single pixel. The first three values are the red, green and blue components and the last one is for transparency. We go through all pixels from the top to down and from left to right, take the red, green and blue values and if they match our expected color, I store the location in an array. To debug, I also wrote a function to mark these locations on the second canvas, but to avoid drawing many black pixels on top of each other, I also add this function to clear the canvas before drawing on every frame. Now we see that something happens, but only very few pixels appear. And in some lighting conditions, not even that. This marker cap is not the same color everywhere. It has many different shades. So using equality here is a bad idea. We need to allow more colors that are nearby in the color space. And that's what we are going to do next. I measured the Euclidean distance between two points in RGB space using this function. And I set a threshold here instead of just checking for equality. You may need to play with this value and also with the base color value as well. It's very sensitive to the color in the room. 
So to make this easier for players, I add this piece of code here that waits for you to click on the screen, grabs the color you just pressed and sets it as the base color. Now I can use this blue color instead or a red colored marker. Okay, I can't use the red marker, but you get the point. So now that we know where this pointer is, we can move on to the next step, which is going to be drawing a path. We first average these marked locations into a point and then add these points into a path. But I want to focus on the more recent parts of this path. So I'm going to discard the old locations and now I have this kind of tail to work with. To debug, I now draw this path on the canvas using this function, which calls this draw segment function between every two consecutive points. So the question now is, how round is this shape? Well, first thing we need to do is close it. And then one way to measure roundness is to use the surface area of this polygon. Now, imagine that I inflate this polygon but um, no stretching allowed, so the length always stays the same. You can see that larger area means a rounder polygon, and the maximum area is going to be that of a circle. So if we ratio the area of this polygon to the area of the circle, we have our roundness measure, and that's what we're going to do next. The function looks like this. It first gets the length of the polygon by adding up all the individual segments, and we remember to add the last one here as well. For the area, I'm going to use the shoelace formula, which is called like that because it pairs the coordinates in this way. I won't explain why this formula works in this video, but I'm going to put the link in the description. Code-wise, these two functions look very similar to each other. Then we calculate the radius of the circle, its area, and finally return the roundness value, which we also use as the score. We're going to need a 95% score to pass the game, but you can get higher values if you try hard enough. Now, when the game is over, we don't look for the pointer anymore, we keep the path unchanged and we show the score in the center of the polygon. We show the score as orange text and we need these parts here, otherwise the top left corner of the score would be in the center of the polygon instead. I also want to use one point precision for the percent value. Game mechanics are now done and we can move on to the visual effects. We're going to display fireworks all over the path. And our fireworks are going to be made of particles that are going to be shooting in every direction. So next, we're going to write our particle class. Each particle will start at a given location and move with a given velocity. And every one of them will exist for just 10 frames, so not even a second. The particles have a move method that updates the location by adding the velocity vector to the current location. And we also have a method for drawing here. For that, I first find out the past location where the particle came from and draw a segment from there to where it is now. I do this instead of simply drawing points because I think it looks better. It's like you see a trail for the particles. So now that we can define particles, let's add them to the path. I update all particles on every single frame. This function creates new ones all over the path, and each one of them gets a random velocity. I scale the velocity by a factor of 10, otherwise the movement is too small to see. 
I then move and draw all particles and trust that each object knows what to do. Finally, I remove particles when they die, first in, first out. I comment out the debugging function so it doesn't interfere with the particles, and the end result is now this. We see a trail of particles left behind the pointer location, but we can make this effect more similar to the one done by Dr. Strange if we make the particles move more backwards along the path. Then, in the particle class, we can have them be affected by gravity as well, but not too much. Less is more in this case. And we can also give our particles different orange tints if we start off with red and vary the amount of green randomly. A nice little touch is to add transparency here as well, so that the particles gradually disappear as their life is running out. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up now. I just made the inside of the portal turn black when the game is over, and I put the two canvases on top of each other in CSS. But now, if I still want the players to click to select the color, I need to make the top canvas unclickable, otherwise this event listener won't work anymore. So let's try it out one last time. Green works, but can I switch to blue if I click on it? Okay, now if I make a round enough shape, Portal opens, and I get a score. Now, if you think this effect is uh, too boring, you can check out the more sophisticated version of the game, which looks like this. And this one even works with the red marker, if I click on it. Check out the source code of the full game and if you're the first to answer how I got it to work with the red marker and name five other things that I improved upon, you'll get a shout out in the next video. Today's shout out goes to Stefan who answered to all five questions from the last episode. Congratulations for that. Radu, signing out.